Look who's pouring her drink right Ooh. live, right here. Oh, get it, girl, get it, get it. It got in my eye. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> that burns. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Hey, welcome to another God TV show. Um, we're so excited for this next guest, by the way. But anyways, don't forget to like, likey, likey, thumbs up down there. Huh? Boom. Subscribe, subscribe, yep. help these girls out, get some more subscriptions. Uh -huh. And don't forget our favorite part. What the hell's my bell? I don't even know. The bell, the bell. I'm trying to make mine so it's not so offensive. Yeah, mine too, because I, I never hear always it. always really large and in charge, Mickey. You're like, I hear that through my dreams. It's a lot. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it does get That's, the attention. If you don't get does. what we're trying to say when we say ring the bell, we mean ring the damn bell, okay? We mean what we say and we say what we mean here on God TV. That is a hashtag. Lisa, thank you for that gorgeous intro. I will tell you guys that you know, we have so many different things to promote on the show. We have this beautiful store that that's that's down below. We have the live chat room. Hi, guys. We're here every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching on replay, thank you. But the real party happens on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but there's YouTube memberships as well. So you're getting all of the full enchilada, all of the unedited episodes and bonus footage. But listen, this is the not the age of Aquarius. This is the age of Dresselmania. OK, we are in the throes yes, of Dr Dresselmania. Oh my gosh. Dressmania. Dressmania. I can't say it any other way. I just physically, <laughs> it doesn't come out. But <laughs> Dresselmania obviously is our annual charity initiative. And we have an amazing sponsor this year, an amazing charity called childhelp.org, which Mickey will tell us all about. And we're so excited to have um, a wonderful cause to support this year. And there are so many things to mention, but I just want to say quickly before our guest gets here, because she'll be here any second now. But if you look in the description, there's so many things to look forward to. We have our Dresselmania auctions benefiting 100% childhelp.org. We have uh, Mick Foley, who is the the grand poobah, if you will, of Dresselmania this year. Yes. It's, the it's master more than a of ceremonies. Host, right? yeah. The master of charities, right? Masters yes, of charities, sure. too. Yeah. And I'm listen, sure. we're going to do a whole Dresselmania episode. But if you understand, I'm going to cry. If you understand what this man has done to facilitate Dresselmania and take it to that next level. It's just incredible. So please stay tuned for more information on that. But in the description, you'll find Dresselmania.com where you can find all the information for our amazing charity that's going to take place on Saturday at the Biltmore where WrestleCon is taking place in Los Angeles. Plus, we are partnering with uh, Progress Wrestling and Wrestle Tours. We have a link down below that you can join us for WrestleMania. They're doing an, a, a fabulous link for us to, to join us on the Saturday at WrestleMania. And all three of us, by the way, Sunday Funday, will all three be at WrestleMania with Progress Wrestling and Wrestle Tours, celebrating God TV in our God TV suite. Prosecco, sweet treats, you know. It's going to be perfect. the sweetest. The sweetest. <laughs> And more info on that to come, but just honestly, it's all in the description. So please take a look. A lot of info, but you don't want to miss a thing. So click that description and check it out, please. No What's doubt. What's going on? I'm glad we've made it so easy this year for everyone with Dresselmania.com. So you yeah. can't get lost. It's all right. right there for you. There's even like a donate now. You can just donate directly to Child Help. If you don't want to bid on the items or you can't be in LA, you can still donate to the charity because it's amazing. And I'm just so really grateful. Year three, and I can't believe God broke the mold when he made Mick Foley. I swear to God, I can't. I can't. I know. What but, a gem. My mother would call him the salt of the earth. Just, I mean, genuinely. always a charitable guy, but the fact that he's literally taken the ball of WrestleMania and like, oh my God, he's just ran with it. Amazing. Yeah. And I have to say a huge shout out to ad free shows. You know, Conrad's been the best in helping us and, and promoting this event and um, Physio with Triller. I mean, there's just been so many people that have jumped on board this year. It's just blown yeah. my mind. And it's just, we said we wanted this to be bigger and better every single year. And it really, really has done that. We've been blown away the last two years. And now this year, I think it's going to be the after party, the place to be after night one, WrestleMania. And I can tell you who else is going to be there is that our special friend, our special guest today, which I'm really excited, ladies, for you all to meet someone who I've grown to love on Wednesdays on Busted Open. Um, she does so much for the show. She really works. I don't think people realize how much she does behind the scenes. And I tell you, I think you, Val, you and her are going to be best of best of best of friends. I like that too. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
I love her so much. And I really want to welcome someone who I adore, Miss Gabby, or like we like to call her, the gift of Gab, to this episode of Gaw TV for the very first time. Woo! Very first, very time, first time ever. Time. Yeah, yeah. I'm and ready yeah. to receive this gift. Let's let's <laughs> let her in. Here we go. Let her let her in. Oh my God! Drop dead in. gorgeous too. Drop dead gorgeous. So I know. I saw you. You were stalking her Instagram, Lisa. I, I like was. Lisa. I was, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Woo>! Gabby. <laughs> yes, Hi. as Nikki said, I stalked your I stalked your uh your Instagram, and I'm like, can you not take a bad picture? I'm oh making God. this all look bad. <laughs> no, stop. Oh I'm mad God. I didn't wear the leopard like Val. That's my, usually my go to is always leopard. Oh. It's the jersey in me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next time jersey. you come out, we're going to all do leopard theme. Perfect. Oh, wow. The jumpsuit. Oh, it's leopard, Holmes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Mickey with the shoulder out today. Come on. Hey, I popped it out for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> little shoulder action. So Dinner and the show. Well, Gabby, we're so excited to have you here. Obviously, you're such a bombshell. Lisa and I were talking about, <laughs> you know, just just lightly stalking your Instagram. You're such a babe. But Thank he's you. been singing your praises as far as your professionalism and your contr con tried. contribution to the business as far as Busted Open. So first of all, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Welcome to the show. I am feeling great. I am so excited to be here. Uh, this yeah. is my favorite podcast ever because uh we get to drink. So right. I already made my cocktail that I'm drinking with my straw because yes. I have lipstick on. Uh -huh. So I'm ready to get weird. Like Can, I, you, I heard it gets weird here. So you're speaking it does our get language. Weird. Yeah. We're ready to get weird. Our first question, if we can ask you, our, our fabulous guest, we'd love you to go first, our guest of honor. And again, you look gorgeous. Can mm -hmm. you tell us who are you wearing? And girl, what are you drinking tonight? What are you imbibing on? Okay. So I am wearing um boy sweatpants that I got from <laughs> Uh, I believe Macy's on sale, but the shirt is free people. So that's like my favorite brand ever. That's why, listen, there's nothing like a good little thumb hole. Who doesn't love a thumb hole? No, the trick with the thumb hole, it automatically ups the shirt game. It's so for sexy. sure. And listen, I love a thumb a hole. hole. It gets the job done. It doesn't always need to be a big hole. It could be small. No. We don't judge holes here on Gaw TV. I will say, no, <laughs> no joke. A few weeks ago, we had Barbie Kelly Kelly, and she had this beautiful, it was a very simple, like, black top. But remember yes. in the chat, I was saying, I have to ask her where it was from because she had the little, it just makes it a little more wow. Yeah. And it By keeps way, it all in place. Uh -huh. I did. I yeah. saw that Kelly Kelly was on the show, and I was like, I have to follow her. She's one of the most gorgeous human beings i think i've ever seen in my life it's actually not fair i was like oh my it is God. unfair i was like damn it's bullshit I gotta, like, is what it is it's it's not normal i i she's it's, not normal to me it's not normal just, like, even without makeup gabby without yeah, makeup, no, don't, that's 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 like drop dead gorgeous yeah, yeah no not allowed there's how there's dare she be around those kind of people yeah <laughs> it's annoying oh my yeah, gosh well annoying. what are you drinking what you vibing on oh. So I only drink tequila. That's like my go-to for everything. Oh. So my favorite, yeah, I know I get weird. I'm from Jersey. This is what we do. Wow. But so I do tequila with, I usually do like a tequila club and I squeeze some lime, but I've really been feeling, this is like my thing that I order now when I go out, I do tequila club soda and I muddle some like mint in it Ooh. and I squeeze a little bit of lime. It is so good. I yeah, think it's like a like Moscow mule it. almost, but with almost. tequila. It's, and, I think no, it's low tequila. calorie, right? That's like yeah, a it's low good calorie, for you. Skinny, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gotta, you. you gotta keep it skinny. But it's the way to go. It's the gap. I think we should just coin it the gap. The gap. I think, there oh, you go. Listen, trending now. Look out, everybody. The gap. Yeah. Sounds delicious. <laughs> you know what's funny is it's like if I can you know do a name here on, on our podcast slash YouTube show that is a wrestling name. Edge does a very similar thing and he calls it the Edge Arita. And That's we had a conversation nice. about this because so actually I had a conversation with him and with Mickey and I do a vodka soda, love a vodka soda. And if you do like just fresh lime, fresh lemon, whatever, it's very, right. very low calories. Mm -hmm. He did something right. similar with tequila. And then Mickey and I were talking one day and she goes, actually Val, do you remember this Mickey? It was a couple of years ago. You said, mm -hmm. I've, I've looked it up. A tequila soda is lower in calorie than a vodka soda. It yes. is. Yes. I had no idea. Yeah. I can't yeah, do just vodka. the alcoholic in me looking up the calories of the yeah. of the alcohol. But it's lower carb. Sure. Nikki yeah. is the guru for many things, including low cal vodka and tequila. Yeah. So that that's funny. That's what I do. So when I've I've had people over for parties and I'm like, can I make you a skinny margarita or an edgerita, if you will, or a gabarita? 
Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's <laughs> literally tequila soda, fresh lime, fresh lemon, and fresh orange juice. It's a little bit of sugar, but that's, or mint. Mint's a great addition. And it's very, very low calorie. Bravo. Oh my God. You like a gabatini. It's a gabatini. A gabatini. A gabulous. A gabulous. Ooh. Oh. Just mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. <laughs> Those are a lot of it myself. TV. If I got to do it myself, I got to do it myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes. You know, that's bit. fabulous. Yeah. Mickey, oh since you were the originator of the tequila soda, can you tell us what you're imbibing on and what you're wearing there, girl? Well, actually, you know, we must have been thinking same minds. I just wanted to show you my glass, honestly, because I'm really <laughs> popping for my glass because I had to dig up in the back of the bar to find it. Look at this mason jar on. Oh, my I'm God. I'm so classy. You look are... at this. You Look have at to this. send that to ODB. <laughs> is that not the cutest thing you ever it's seen? It's cute. But there is Terramana tequila in here. And I oh. also made a margarita okay. with um, this bravado, which I've had before, this pineapple Ooh. jalapeno margarita mix, yeah. which is so, so good. And I got it at the truck stop, Bucky's. It was at Bucky's. Oh, I love Bucky's. No, God I'm bless like Bucky's. Bravado. It's bravado. It's an experience. If you've never been to Bucky's, I've heard about it. I've heard amazing things. You got to get a shirt. It is amazing yeah. when you go there. Yeah, but you I just have to be. You have to like. You have to prepare yourself before you walk in the door. You just yeah. have to know that you are walking into the Mall of America yeah. of truck stops. You know, now, Mickey, uh, me as, as I live in the UK, Gabby. So like, I just miss it's America lovely. all the time. I brought back dill pickles and ranch dressing as you do, you know, as, as my mother taught me. Uh, but Bucky's is not the same as Stuckey's, but isn't there a thing no. called Stuckey's? Yeah, there's a Stuckey's. Yeah, Where's, there is a Stuckey's. Stuckey's is a red Bucky's has kind of took over. They're trying to steal Stuckey's gimmick because, you know, they got the beaver. What? They got oh. the beaver. And so now they have a freaking mascot and the mascot like walks around and it'll meet the kids. You can Bucky? take a picture with Bucky. That's you know, I never seen that. For yeah. Stuckies, or Bucky versus not? Stuckies. Oh. This is Stuckies. Many, many a controversy has happened over a beaver. I'm just going <laughs> to <laughs> just gonna put that, that out there. Sounds Isn't that how the world goes People around? be fighting over them beavers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they say damn to that, Mickey. Damn, yeah. damn to that. <laughs> damn. Yes. I love her already. Oh, Lisa, my God. I got to go to you next because you, I saw her do this before you came on there, Gabby. And I was like, what is she holding? So tell us what you're, who you're wearing, what you're drinking, and what the hell is that gorgeous cup? Because I want one immediately. Okay. Well, <laughs> first I'll start with my, okay. Um, I don't recommend this and I don't want to crap on any brand. She's going to bury it. Fetzer, <laughs> Fetzer wine. Fetzer is the shit, sir. Yeah, <laughs> the shit, sir. I had to add uh, ice cubes and a little splash of water okay. to get it down. But um, oh, that's the oh. um, that's what you get for sending your boyfriend to get you some wine. Oh, oh God! This was Poor only three ninety eight, and I go, oh, well, don't give me that anymore. But uh, that's yeah, why. But it's that's why it was three ninety eight. Uh -huh. Exactly. It, it's it's honestly, I even have this irrigator on top of it. It's not oh. helping. It's not helping. It's not and I have it out of this um from photons and stitches. Um, she made us uh, this grown ass women uh, Ooh, wine uh, beautiful. tumbler. I got you guys made um, for Indiana. I'll have it for you in Indiana. Oh, thank you so yes. much. Yes, That's and beautiful. I got one for, for Danny as well because she helps us so much on our website. And I'm wearing, I just ordered this because. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. I, I didn't know I, it was going to be a boob show. I'm look, right? yes. Yes. You guys, look. Wait, can I tell you, Lisa, I have that exact same bodysuit, the <gasps> exact same thing. I just, I ordered it from Amazon though, because I'm. <laughs> That's very sexy. But I, I, I googled sexy turtlenecks because I like high neck because I'm a little older than you guys, and I like it to hold my wrinkles in right here. I wanted it to be a little higher, like this, a little bit. That More is amazing. Deep, we have like, like, isn't that where your little head like just popped out? I'm just a head. It's I'm a head in boobs. A turtleneck oh is God. very chic. It's very like old money. I love beautiful. A yeah, I like. Yeah. They say in the UK too. your old neck, but it's it's we say turtleneck. Yeah, it's very sexy. Okay. Lisa. Yeah, and I, I like my it. turkey little, neck. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a yeah. little window into all the right places. It's a very. There sexy you go. Window. There you go. Yes, Just and I got new shades, you guys. I ordered new shades because Ooh. you know how blind I am, and um, I had to go They're up beautiful. to two seventy five on readers. 
They are nice. They frame your face really. They look so good on your face. I was so I scared those. to order them because I'm like, ah, oh, these girls are models that are like they're they're wearing it. And I, I put them on. I go, oh, Val's going to really pop huge on these glasses because she wears Gorgeous. really ex- fancy stuff. You know, the what louder I mean? the better. Yeah, I have no yes, chance. Yes. I love sunglasses. Yeah. I'm a big sunglasses person. I have yeah. like a problem. Oh, it's like, I put yeah. my outfits around my sunglasses. Like, they, they do too. It's it's not normal, yeah. and I'll wear them even in like inside if it's dark out. Like no matter what's happening, the sun. You know what's weird, Gabby? Though, yeah, I talked to my brother. I have an older brother, and we talked about we don't we both don't wear sunglasses so much because yeah. we like eye contact when we talk. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know, so I, I, I you can read too much on my face. So I'm yeah, I know you sell too much sunglasses. Trying to shield a little bit of Nikki it. knows I don't really shy from uh, how I feel. I'm pretty yeah. Hot. Her face so says I'm it all. She's like, uh huh, and then her like face that. is saying, <laughs> "Fuck off." Well, maybe you need a pair of like that. That's my, my whole my whole thing. I always tell people like during like if it's a, an early airport day, like right. Yes. You, if you have no eye makeup on, you have crazy glasses, whether yes. it's glasses or sunglasses. If you do a little bit of lip, it looks like you're made up, but you're not. Your whole face is hidden by these giant ass glasses. Giant, beautiful sunglasses. Yeah. And it helps at 6 a.m. for those early flights and all those fluorescent lights yeah. as you're scrolling oh. through the airport like this. They oh. can't see that you're like this. No, line. not at all. It's so bad. Appearance. No one likes that. He does that with her eye on the show all the time. By the, the doll way, eye? The one eye thing? Yeah. it's. Yeah. I think I see her more with one eye open than two. So it's fine. Gabby, I, I'm not going to put it on the show because I don't want to, we don't have Trish, Trish's permission yet, but I want to send you a photo of her and Trish. They do the doll <laughs> eye. But Mickey does one eye and Trish only can do the other eye. And it's this weird, like perfect it's symmetry of haunted horror nightmare. That's why we're so sexy so well. for some weird reason. Because y'all are really, really odd. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of getting to know her in like real life recently. And she's legitimately one of my favorite human beings ever because she's so quirky and like down to earth and like chill. And if you don't know her, like to know her is just to love her so much because oh, she's so funny absolutely I and you, you never know what's going to come out of her mouth like no. you, you have to when you talk when you talk to her you have to really listen because she's going to say something funny in one sentence you're like what, what, yes. what did you say oh my god <laughs> like, yeah 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 the most entertaining for sure i will just tell you quickly i'm just drinking uh red wine i have a little new look uh neon number i'm drinking a rioja which is a el duque de Meralta. uh a little red wine there my lights are too yeah um, oh, okay Little red wine ski, but I will tell you, Gabby, we are so excited to gab with you, if if you will, because I want to hear your whole story. I want all the mm-hmm. fans, and if they're watching for the first time, they haven't met you before, which I'm sure many of them obviously know you. Right. But tell us what got you into Busted Open and what got you into wrestling, because I just saw a tweet of yours. You were saying like you just fell so much in love with wrestling, but tell yeah. us your journey that got you there. It's it's honestly one of those journeys where like it's if five years ago, you would have told me this, what I was doing with my life, I would have looked at you and been like, okay, that's weird. Cause it makes no sense because I didn't watch a lick of pro wrestling until I got the job almost five years ago. Now it'll be five years in July um, or August, but yeah, I always, always wanted, knew I wanted to be in media. I wanted to be on TV. I went to college for broadcast journalism. I was like, the only thing that will get me anywhere in, in my life is that I can talk. I can talk my way out of anything. I can persuade you into anything. It's just the one thing I'm good at. My mom wanted me to be a lawyer. Of course, I didn't go that way with it. But um, I just, I love being in front of the camera. I love talking. I just love being creative with that kind of stuff. So I was like, I'm going to be an e-entertainment like correspondent on the red carpet. That's what I want to do. I love these reality shows. I like to watch this kind of stuff. Like that's what I'm going to do. But I played sports my whole life. I grew up with two older brothers. So I did always watch sports. I'm really close to my dad. So that's what we were doing. I interned at Sirius XM my last year of college. And after that, I was like, I'm, I'm getting a job here. Like this, this is what I'm doing. So I just kept interviewing and I literally sat down with the then hiring manager for now uh fight nation which is where busted open is on a friday we had an interview for an hour and a half and i said listen i've never seen pro wrestling i've never watched any of this but i will be the best producer you've ever had in your life because i'm the most competitive human being ever and i will make sure that i am i was hired on monday literally wow and i did one show on busted open with dave and all the guys and i just heard the way they spoke the way they could kind of make their own opinions it wasn't a black and dry thing wrestling it's not 
It's not about statistics. It's not about who won and who lost. You can make your own assumption at any time because it's storyline and it's exciting. And there's so many different personalities and characters. And from that day, I was like, wow, I'm going to start watching. I watched everything. I engaged in the shows. I listened. Um, Dave popped me on the mic and I would make the most time out of my time on the microphone. I would make everybody laugh. I would bring my personality into it. And then it was the blend of sports and entertainment, which are two loves of my life that I never knew existed. And then when they came together for me and, um, you know, I got, you know, I, I went up from full-time on the channel to full-time on the show to associate producer to producer to now full-time digital producer and a personality. It's the first time where I can say like this, everything happened for a reason. I never used to believe that. But like, I 100% believe it now because I can't imagine not being involved in this kind of business and this kind of sport and this kind of entertainment and just the way it took off. It's it's a very good blend of competitiveness, hard work, and kind of just being in the right place at the right time, I think. Right. And what yeah. sports did you play? What sports did you play as, as a so kid? So I played soccer and basketball. Soccer was like my number one, like, oh, I, I bit, even He's still- very soccer. tall, Lisa. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember meeting nine. you in person and I was like, oh, I'm very short. <laughs> I remember I saw Mickey, I gave her a hug and I was like, I look like your mom, but like- okay. I was like up to her boob. I just yeah. and took she a nap. Hugged and it was like I bent <laughs> down a little bit. Um, wow, wow, yeah, yeah. that's so exciting. Yeah, so it's exciting. pretty amazing. I, I'm, very, I'm very grateful for where I am. I still want more because that's how I am. I don't think I'll ever right. be like, oh yeah, this is perfect. This is what I'm supposed to be doing because now I have- the privilege to be doing all these other things because of what busted open has given to me. But, you know, I, I watch on my own and I have my own opinion now, as opposed to just listening to the guys and what they're saying. Right. That's good though. To like, to like yes. have, have your own love for it in your own separate way. I have to say like, for me, like obviously like not being a wrestler, this is why Mickey was like, you're always my best friends. I'm like, immediately I was like, this is my kind of girl. Yeah. I love the talking point of it. Right. But I, I, yeah. I always kind of thought that I sometimes thought that wrestling got it wrong in the sense of, okay, so if a girl is like, obsessed with wrestling or she's a wrestler and then let's make her be a talker that sometimes is hard to do like for example when I would model a lot a lot of the models they were beautiful models on paper beautiful in still photographs but as far as talking they weren't very good at talking so then to have somebody who's a great model in a still form to get them to talk it very often did not work and with wrestling girls same thing you maybe maybe they're not this does not go for everybody but they might be physical athletes that are very very you know well trained and well you know into that athlete form, the wrestlers or their, you know, models, it doesn't always equate into being a good talker. So sometimes when they would hire people, um, Renee Young is a great example. There's a girl, Lauren, that was um, a good friend of mine, is now a Golf Channel host that was a host and they hired her for TNA Wrestling as an announcer. She was a great announcer because guess what? She didn't know wrestling, but she was a great announcer, period. Right. And then she, like you said, she got into the wrestling and she respected it and was lovely and was, you know, uh, embraced and, and, you know, with all the guys and the girls because she wanted to be there and she respected it. But she was a host first and foremost. So for me, I see both sides, whereas other people in wrestling would go, well, this girl's not paid her dues in the business, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, she's actually probably going to be a better host because she's a host. Right. First and foremost. And for that reason, sometimes that does make the better host. Renee Young was the first person. I always say, Chris Hero, we should have him on the show. Um, I was watching at WrestleMania. I hadn't watched any wrestling in quite a while. As far as WWE, I was very entrenched in Impact Wrestling. And I said, God, this Renee girl, she's so good. I think I said this to her when she's on the show. And I was like, she's so great. And I said, you know, because everyone else had to be a wrestler. She must be a wrestler, right? And he goes, no. And I went, oh. So she's one of the first ones ever to have just been a host in Canada. Mm-hmm. And then she was parlayed to being a host in wrestling. And it was just so refreshing because she had those skills beforehand. And sometimes the love of wrestling comes later and there's nothing to be insulted about, about that. People get very offended and it's like, that's not, Oh my, yes. it's not fair. Yeah. yeah. I get that a lot, actually. I get right. people like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. You know what I mean? She's, you know, she's it's just cause she works on the show and like she's new or whatever. And like, I'm very much in the mindset where it's like, I think my perspective is unique because I didn't grow up watching and fresh right. and outside. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So my opinion is going to, first of all, opinions are always going to be different no matter what, because we're going to, we see through different eyes. We all take things in differently. We like different characters or whatever, but like I'm seeing it right now. It's a, it's, it's kind of 
a, a gift to, to, for me to be like, you know what? I didn't know any of those people. How many people are doing new things in their career now? And it's like over again. We talked about Edge. I know Edge right now from what we've seen the past few years, I don't know that edge from before, but right. it's so cool. Cause I can love and appreciate this version of him. Of course right. I respect that version of him, but it doesn't ever persuade how I look at him now because this is like the first time like that right. when he showed back up at the Royal rumble and it was that emotional from injury. I didn't even have to know the full story to know it was a big moment. Right. right. And that's how you create new fans in anything. And you always want new people to love what you love. Very well said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very well. Yeah. Absolutely. I always say you have to treat it like they're seeing you for the first time ever. And I right. would say, I don't know who's hating on you, Gabby, because I go, I think that the one amazing thing, like even when we're on the show and then you come on or whatever, one of the amazing things is you've opened up my eyes in a lot of ways because because you are a new fan. And so yeah. you see the 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 product and, and wrestling and the industry way different than I can see it. I can't right. see it that way anymore yeah. I you know so so to hear it from you it really kind of opens up my eyes a little bit and even helping like with younger talent and stuff like that who may not say those things or 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 say those things out loud or whatever because they're like oh don't judge me or whatever um which I never would but I think it's very refreshing because I go like oh because when you say when you have you always have an excellent points and excellent opinions anyway but I think it just to have that newer perspective and go oh okay that makes sense it makes right. sense, you know, because when you, we've been doing it for so long and been a part of the business and I grew up a fan of the business and it wasn't like one of those like wrestling historian watched all the matches, watched every territory, seen every Japanese match. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. not that, you know, I liked what I liked. I liked entertainment. I like to be entertained and yes. I like stories and characters and good storylines. And yeah, the yeah. emotion. And if and I like that, that's the, that's the feel. gift, yeah. like as right Edge here. is, but yeah, when, when Edge can get someone that wasn't a fan of him emotionally invested in i don't know you from the past and right. get you invested that's a freaking awesome wrestler and freaking knows how to get in someone's mind and care and get the emotions brought out in you and create new fans right yeah. you know that's it's all about creating kudos to him the old school not the old oh edgenator the new school now what did you say little, little edgerita i said kudos edgerita to him. I mean, like, even like Gabby, for example, I think you understand what I'm talking about. So like Undertaker, for example, when I started watching, I'll be very honest. I I, I never try to shy away from when I was a fan. Um, when I was watching, I, he was the American badass and he was Kid Rock and the bandana. They're like, well, the Undertaker used to be this dead man character. I was like, oh, okay. But I didn't know that because I was right. watching after that. And I feel kind of right. stupid saying it, but I shouldn't feel that that's just when my journey started. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's it, every, everyone has their own journey it's, it's and i think you definitely shouldn't um ever apologize for that or sort of like you know try to hide that everyone has their own and all, everyone also we talk about this all the time on the show has their own era of like oh when i was watching that was the best era well of yeah, course right. it was the best era because that's when you started watching you know right. mm -hmm. of course so, yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing. And I think, you know, you want these newer fans because the, what I've learned about pro wrestling as a whole in the community and as a fan base, they're the greatest fans of any fan base of any kind of sport, anything like I, I'm not even just saying that because I work in it. I think their loyalty to who they like and their investment in these people is almost sometimes too far. Like a lot of stuff that wrestlers have to deal with is, you know, crazy fans. Cause you get so invested, <laughs> but it's a blessing, which is a blessing and a curse of course. Right. But like what I see differently is like, it's a, it's very much like if you grew up watching your children now watch it and then their children watch it because they watch it, which is so different because it's, it is something that you can be so emotionally invested in that's so meaningful to you that you bring into everyday life. And you could be talking about it any day of the week and it can be such a such a way to bring people together. And I feel like even if you know somebody who's a wrestling fan, you automatically like are on the same page about stuff. It's not the right. same like football or something like that because it's like, oh, what did you think about that last night? Oh, you like him? Like it's a conversation no matter yeah. what. And everyone likes each other. It's, I'm trying to get yes, rid of that. It's a family. It's a family. family. It's a family. Lottery. You speak yes. the same language, you get each other. Yeah. It's even like when you see somebody, we talk about like merchandise. You see somebody yes. with like a, oh my a, God. It's a oh, Harry Potter yes. shirt. Undertaker shirt or a Paul yeah. Heyman shirt. You yeah. just go, hey, I'm part of you too. So that you like, also we're part of the same club, right? Secret right. handshake. 
Yes, yeah. exactly. Like I, I'm not alone. And I want to get rid of that stigma of like, I was a pro wrestling fan and that kind of makes me, you know, kind of, a, they get the signal, like I'm a nerd or like whatever. Yeah. And like F that, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. So I have to say F. Yeah. You can, you can. Oh, please. You can. I can. can. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I'm not going to do it now. It <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a lady. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I still have a drink left. Um, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but like, I don't feel that way at all. Like, I like pro wrestling and I'm fucking cool. So if I like it, I'm going to make my friends watch it with me and we're going to make it cool again. Like pro wrestling is a cool thing. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. Like, don't ever be ashamed to like what you like or to go around and like talk to other people about it. Cause like you're connected with these people for a reason. And like for athletes to go out and not only perform athletically, but to play a into a character, to be in a live crowd, to react, to sell is much harder to me than what 90 other percent of a lot of people are doing. So you got to pay respect where respect is due. For sure. In my opinion. And it's, it's yeah. fucking cool, man. It is cool. Yeah. It is, part of it is cool. It is yeah. cool. Mary James cool. is cool. Oh, well, we love you guys so much. We can't wait to see you at WrestleCon. The four of us are going to be there and we're going to be supporting in a wonderful cause, child help. Um, and we have this wonderful video that we'd love to show you that kind of explains a little bit more what child help is all about. So if you have a little time, stay tuned. In the mid 50s, two actresses then known as Sarah Buckner and Yvonne Lime met on the set of The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. The young stars soon found themselves singing their way through Southeast Asia on a USO tour. Little did they know that that trip would be the beginning of a journey that continues today. It was October 1959. The remnants of a typhoon was bearing down on the island of Japan, but the two ladies ventured out into the street and saw a sight that hurt them to their cores. There, in the rain, the wind, and the cold were huddled 11 unwanted children, cast-offs with no home and no caring parents to look after them. Sarah and Yvonne offered the warmth of their coats to the children, then took them back to their hotel for food and shelter. But what now? Sarah and Yvonne decided the only thing they could do was to start an orphanage. It would be one of five orphanages the two would eventually build, plus a hospital and a school, all spearheaded by Sarah and Yvonne with dedicated Marine Corps partners and funded with the help of the generosity of their friends and film contacts back home. In 1975, the fall of Saigon was imminent. Word reached Sarah and Yvonne that thousands of orphaned children from South Vietnam were in harm's way. And so began Operation Babylift. Into the waiting, welcoming arms of new parents went over 2,000 children. Witnessing their life-saving efforts, the First Lady of California at the time, Nancy Reagan, implored Sarah and Yvonne to lend their talents here at home to what she called America's best kept secret, child abuse and neglect. In 1976, the first of a number of residential facilities was opened, each designed to give abused and neglected children a protective, nurturing environment, a place to be safe. In the 1980s, Children's Village USA implemented the first national toll-free hotline, 1-800-FOR-A-CHILD. In 1983, a name change, Child Help. With the national hotline and other initiatives, Child Help was now truly a national organization, one that could offer help to abuse children nationwide. Child Help would go on to open group homes in California to give children transitioning to foster care a protective place to find support and safety. In the early 90s, saw it is turned, and a new 270-acre residential center, the Alice C. Tyler Village of Child Help East, soon offers programs for the treatment of abused and neglected children there. Child advocacy centers in Tennessee and Arizona would follow. Educational programs, such as Speak Up and Be Safe, would signal the start of Child Help's new initiatives on the prevention of abuse and neglect. 
In 2000, Merv Griffin donates his sprawling dude ranch to the cause. More child advocacy centers would open, plus foster care programs, abuse prevention education initiatives, and much more. And all the while, Sarah O'Meara and Yvonne Federson would receive not only the admiration of their peers, but honorary university doctorates, countless awards and accolades, and impressively, nine Nobel Peace Prize nominations. Today, we commemorate their Diamond Jubilee, and we celebrate an amazing journey that has changed the lives of over 10 million children for the better. The path that Sarah and Yvonne started on 60 years ago has led to Child Help becoming the largest nonprofit organization in the world that is dedicated to helping at risk children and victims of child abuse and neglect. What began as a simple act of kindness has transformed into an organization offering hope and inspiration to millions. This is the word to go, yo, go.